Good morning, America. Today is August the 2nd, Thursday, and it is 1047 a.m. We are going to start with an SS this morning. Um, the first part is coming from Matthew 6, <clears throat> verse 4, and it says, Thy father we seek is in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Thy father which seeketh in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Okay, so if you search for God in secret and openly, he will reward thee. Okay, the second one is coming from Colossians 3, 1. And it says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. If the... If ye then be risen with Christ, <clears throat> seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So we are not to be storing treasures here on earth because none of these treasures can we carry with us unto heaven or hell. Okay, so we ought to seek those things that are of Christ all the time. Okay, today we're going to be reading from Jeremiah 2. Um, it is <clears throat> one of those chapters that is laced with uppercase lettering. That means that almost every verse is bold writings. Um, we have one verse that is not, verse 4. And a portion of verse 1. Verse 1 is not. Verse 4. And the remaining 36 verse, 37 verses are all bold lettering. Um, and another um, thing about these 37 verses of Jeremiah 2. Uh, you have three colors predominantly. Let's say four. You have red for discipleship. You have an abundance amount of brown for Satan. And uh, an almost equal amount of black for sin. However, the brown seems to overpower this, the, the black in this chapter. And the last two verses, verse 36 and 37, are gold for prophecy. We'll be reading it both from the Rainbow Bible as well as from our Parallel Bible. The title of Jeremiah 2 is, Israel is rebuked for forsaking the Lord. Israel is rebuked for forsaking the Lord. In the same way that we are being chastised for uh, polluting the earth. Uh, we are being slowly chastised and the earth is slowly sputing us out by way of fire, uh, mainly, and water, mainly. Destroying many, many, many acres of land, destroying many homes, um, dislocating many people, killing some. Um, so we are really paying the price for our sins. So Jeremiah 2 will be more of a remembrance of those things that the biblical... Uh, people did that caused the Lord to to punish them for their deeds. And we are not an exception to the rule, America. It may be 2018, but the God that we serve is the same God of the biblical time. So try to keep that in mind. All right, so let's begin with verse 1 and 2. And uh, verse 3 is the only split verse I see so far. Um, the other ones are not. So, let's read one to three. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, and here comes the uppercase lettering, starting with verse two. And it says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy mouth, thy youth, the love of thy esposos. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. So he remember how the people used to be. They searched after him in the wilderness. And they are not like that anymore. 
uh, verse 3 is that split verse where it comes first and it says Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase the black part says all that devour him shall offend evil shall come upon them saith the Lord so this is what's coming upon us evil much evil okay and like I tell people today it's only going to get worse it's not going to get any better until we decide to what repent and undo many of the things that we have done including repealing many of the laws that are against the will of God until we do this mayhem will persist okay verse 1 it's here it says Israel forsakes God uh, in the same way that America has forsaken God. The word of the Lord came to me, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert, through a land not sown, three, Israel was holy to the Lord and the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were laid guilty and disaster overtook them, declared the Lord. Okay. Verse 4, whew, all the way to 13, uh, actually to 8 is brown for Satan. Okay. For hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Five, thus said the Lord, here comes up a case lettering, What inequities have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? That's exactly where we are today. We are become totally vain walked away from God, had no fear of him at all, okay? Thus said the Lord, What inequity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Six, neither say they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought, and of the shadows of death through a land that no man passes through and where no man dwelleth. Uh, now we don't ask so we don't even talk about the exodus from Egypt. Um, seven. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. Uh, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made my inheritance an abomination indeed. Eight, the priests say not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law know me not. The pastors also transgress against me, and the prophets prophesy by Baalau, and walketh after things that do not profit. Even today, the servants of God defile his house, that the Catholic Church is forever in the limelight for, for abusing our sons. Forever in the limelight. And at first the church began to hide these individuals. But now um, they are actually facing in the um, penalties for their actions. They have forsaken God in the worst way. And, and people talk about how the church, uh, uh, the Catholic church has been offended. How um, the... Pastors have been, um, uh, have offended the people, but the greatest offense in America is how the church, the Catholic church has offended God. That is the greatest offense, it, that the offense to God is always going to be greater than the offense to man. Period. The offense that the Catholic church does to God is greater than any offense done to man. Any. Okay, let's read that from here. From 4 to 
9. And we're not going to do this entire chapter. We're, we don't rush through anything. We're going to do half of it. Uh, so we will stop at 16. Actually, we will stop at 18. Uh, we'll do 20, 19. Okay. Let's take it from here. Hear the word, verse 4. Hear the words of the Lord, O house of Jacob, all you clans of the house of Israel. Five. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. So when you worship a God that does not breathe, you become worthless yourself. Okay, and there are many, many gods that may appear to have noses, but it cannot breathe. They have a mouthpiece, but it doesn't have a tongue. They have eyes, but yet have no vision. These are the gods that many worship. Okay, I will read that again. What fault did your fathers find in me that they stray so far from me? Question mark. They follow worthless idols and became worthless themselves. Five, six. They did not ask, where is the Lord? Who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and rifts, a land of drought and darkness, a land where no one traveled and no one lived? Seven. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich products, but you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detest detestable. And not only have we defiled the land, we are, we, we polluted it. We have taken the sanctuary of marriage and turned it upside down. We have taken the laws of God and totally ignored them. If we follow the laws of God. Every farmer upon the land would allow his land to rest every seven years. Every seven years, every farmer, regardless of what kind of crop you harvest, you are to let your land rest for seven years. And on that seven year, America, anything that grew upon that land is for the poor. You are not even allowed to tilt the land on the seven year. Anything that does come up out of that ground belongs to the poor. So the poor are able to come upon your land and take whatever they find. That is the laws of God. Every seven years, you are supposed to let the oceans re rest as well. You are not to take anything out of that ocean on the seventh year. But what do we do? We continuously drain it every year, 365 years a day, a year, 365 days a year. There are large mega boats out there taking tons and tons of fish every year. Do you not think the supply will dwindle eventually? Do you not think because you have failed to do this that your land will not produce a bad crop? Do you not think the Lord will not punish us by, by causing drought and killing that which you have planted? These rules were made for a purpose. Okay. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich products but ye came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable eight the priest did not ask where is the lord those who dealt with the law did not know me the leaders rebelled against me the prophets prophesied by Balao following worthless idols nine is a first the second the first whole black verse or uppercase lettering, wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. Nine. Therefore I will charge against you again, declared the Lord, and I will bring charges against your children's children. Okay. 
so that that's going on in this in, in this land right now the burnings the the uh, the flooding it's all a punishment it's all a curse it is not a blessing it is never a blessing to see your refrigerator floating through your living room that's no blessing To walk outside and there's so much water, you see snakes and alligators. That's no blessing. Okay. Therefore, I will bring charges against you again, declared the Lord. And I will bring charges against your children's children, which is this generation. All right. Ten. To 13, again, we're on brown for Satan. For pass over the isles of Chetam and see and send, send unto Kedar and consider diligent, diligently and see if there be such a thing. 11. Has a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory from that which does not profit them. It never profits the nations to listen to a servant who does not use the gospel of the Lord. It never profits you. It may sound good to your ears, but it will do you no good. It's like eating junk food. No nutritional value at all. 12. Be astonished, ye, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. You ought to be astonished. And if you're not astonished yet, hold on, it's coming. 12. Let's continue to 13. For my people have committed two evils. Two. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed out, hewed them out shikums, broken shikums that can hold no water. All right, from 10 to 13. Cross over to the coast of, of Kittim and look. Send to Qatar and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. 11. Has a nation ever changed its God? Yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. 13. 12. Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with great horror, declared the Lord. 13. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own chickens, broken chickens that cannot hold water. What would be a broken human chicken? A priest that abuses your children. A pastor that beds the women in the church of God. And a servant of God that abuses the young men that, uh, that he is supposed to be helping out. Committed fornication with these young men. A pastor. That comes and brings his new spouse, another male, to the altar and announces it to the church. That is broken systems. They can hold no water. They cannot hold the glory of God with their deeds. But yet, you trust them dearly. Yet, you defend them despite the evidence They have forsaken me. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own shit terms, broken shit terms. They cannot hold water. 14 to 19 is black for sin, all uppercase lettering. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homemade slave? Why is he spoiled? 
15. The young lion roars upon him and yells, and they made his land a waste. His cities are burnt without inhabitants. So if you think the humans are the only ones on the run, the animals are running as well. <clears throat> 16. Also, the children of Nod and Tahapanese have broken the crown of thy head. 17. Thou hast not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, when he led thee by the way. 18. And now, what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt, to drink the water of Shilar? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, to drink the waters of the river? 19. Thy own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know, therefore, and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of Israel. No! We do not fear God. Anytime a president likened unto a king approves marriage of the same sexes, that is evil. Anytime a, an organization, Social Security, begins to give benefits to these evil couples, that is evil. You are polluting the land. Spitting in God's face daily. A force that we are not able to fight with. Let's take it from 14 to 19. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has he become plundered? Fifteen lions have roared. They have groaned at him. They have laid waste his land. And his towns are burnt and deserted. Yes. Yes. We are slowly occupying the most precious space available for the animals. And then you wonder why they come into your encampment, digging in your trash can, when you have taken their land and built up on it, leaving them very little land to roam. What do you expect the bears to do? When you take and you built your house in the middle of a mountain, what do you expect? Sixteen also the men of Memphis and uh, Tephanes have saved the crown of your head. Have you not, seventeen, have you not brought... This on yourselves for forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way. Have we not brought this on ourselves, America? You're so concerned about what the politicians are doing. You're so concerned about the economy. You're so concerned about all the things that are not important. You know what makes America great? What makes America great is not its economical condition. It's that it glorifies the God of Israel. That's what makes America great. Not the works of, of the politicians, but the spiritual condition of the nation is what makes that nation great. Have you not brought this on yourselves by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? Have we not? 
18, now why go to Egypt to drink water from Shalor? And why go to Azaria to drink water from the river? 19, your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuck you. Consider this and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no art of me, declared the Lord, the Lord Almighty. So you can continue to play church if you want to. But at the end of the day, we will always pay for our deeds and the destruction that comes upon us for our wickedness is never worth the sins. It's never worth the punishment that we receive. Never. Okay, we will stop at 19, but I will repeat 19. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuck you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, no respect, no fear, nada. Declare the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero, and as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the Lord preserve thee and those that you love, and may his will be manifested through you. In the meantime, please enjoy this beautiful day, and if you don't have to go out today, please don't go out, because it is not worth uh, risking your life to drive through flooded waters. If you see the water is above your tires, please turn a different direction and don't make yourself uh, a victim because that's what you become when you try to drive through water that is too high. You become a victim. Okay? Learn how to save yourself and use some common sense. If the road is too high in water, please. Go a different direction and learn how to save yourself. And maybe along the way you can save someone else. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy this beautiful rainy day. Thank you for listening.